Take an American IPA and combine it with a Belgian wit beer and you've got yourself a white IPA. And this one's gonna be an interesting one to brew. We've got a step mash to deal with and some spices to add. Let's do it. How's it going? My name is Martin Key and I'm taking the homebrew challenge to brew 99 beers in 99 weeks. And most of the beer styles that I brew, well, they have quite an established and long history, sometimes like going back centuries. Today's style white IPA goes back to 2010. It was a collaboration beer between Deschutes and Boulevard breweries and they came up with this style. In 2015, it was adopted by the BJCP guidelines, and in 2020, it was brewed by the Homebrew Challenge. In terms of ingredients, what I'm building here is a beer with an original gravity of about 1064, which will give about a 6.4% ABV. In terms of the base malts, I'm using two, 45% of the grist is going to use Belgian Pilsner malt. And the other 45% of the grist to make up my base malts, well, that is going to be unmalted wheat. So this is just raw wheat grains. And that's going to have an impact on how we brew this beer, which I'll get to in a sec. Then I'm using 8% of flaked oats for a bit of mouthfeel and body, and 2% of acidulated malt. Now, because I am using unmalted wheat, that means that my usual single infusion mash is not going to convert all of that wheat in this beer. So I'm going to need to perform a step mash. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to mash this beer at two different temperatures. I'm gonna start at 130 Fahrenheit and then move on to my main mash temperature of 153 Fahrenheit. So I've got the water heated to 130 to get us started. Let's add in the grains. Not forgetting my flaked oats, which of course were not milled. Okay, so I will now start the pump. And we're going to maintain this temperature of 130, or actually just bring it up to 130 first of all, uh, but maintain that for about 20 minutes. Oh, and by the way, this does bring up another interesting point. Normally when I use a lot of wheat malt, I use rice hulls to avoid getting a stuck mash. Um, but people are telling me in the comments that actually I don't need to do that with this system because it's got this basket in here and it's a brew in the bag system. So I shouldn't really be worried about anything getting stuck. So I have uh, perhaps foolishly not added any rice hulls despite having a huge bucket of them here in the brewery. Let's see how that works out. been 20 minutes now the protein rest is complete at 49 celsius or 120 fahrenheit time to move on to our sacrification temperature which is 153 fahrenheit or 67 celsius um, this is flowing very well no stuck mash but living up to its name of pretty pale kind of white it's looking good so this is look Having an electric brewing system makes step mashing so very easy. I'm not having to heat up extra water and bring it in or anything like that. I can just press some buttons. So I'm gonna set my temperature controller now to 153 Fahrenheit. I'll probably maintain this temperature for about an hour, but I will keep an eye on my pre-boil gravity when I get to 1054 then. I know the mash is done. At that point, I will do one more temperature adjustment, which is my usual mash out. That's done at 168 Fahrenheit or 76 Celsius. I just hold it at that temperature for about 10 minutes. Ooh. 
Whew, that was heavy. Well, I have really struggled to get this to convert the way that I wanted to. I'm 90 minutes into my mash now. I did move to a mash out at 168 Fahrenheit. Um, but when I take a pre-boil gravity reading, I'm getting a reading of 1043. I was looking for 1054. And this really took a long time to do anything. Uh, as soon as I started my main mash at 153, I took a, a pre-boil gravity reading and I was had almost nothing. And uh, it's just really gone slowly from there. So I've kind of given up at 1043. Um, I think what this will ultimately mean is I'm gonna have a beer it's going to be about a percentage less in alcohol than I planned. As for the reason why, well, almost half of the grist here was raw wheat, unmalted wheat, and uh, maybe that was just a little bit too much. Um, okay, so I'm going to bring this up to boil now. And while this is heating up, let's talk a little bit about the hops. Looking at an IBU of around 66 for this beer, Sounds like it's going to be quite bitter, but it's actually going to really focus on a lot of, of uh, citrusy kind of hop additions to this. So first of all, we're going to start with Centennial. I have one ounce of Centennial, which I will put in at the start of the boil. Then with 15 minutes to go, I'm going to add some bitter orange peel. Now, yeah, this is clearly invoking Belgian wit styles here. And uh, I think this is an important addition to add in. So I have one ounce of bitter orange peel that I'll be adding into the bowl with 15 minutes to go. With 10 minutes to go, I have some flavor hops, which will really bring out some of the citrusy flavor. So I have Amarillo, and I also have New Zealand Pacific Jade, which the packet describes as giving musty fruit like melon, lime, and blood orange. So that's going in at 10 minutes also. And then for the aroma at zero minutes, so at flame out, another bag of Pacific Jade. Chilled the wort and transferring it now in to my fermenter. It is super cloudy, much cloudier than usual, which you would expect from using raw or unmalted wheat. In terms of my original gravity, well, yeah, I did not reach 1064 due to my mash efficiency issues. So I am actually at 1052 for my original gravity. Now, yeast, well, Belgian yeast is what you're gonna to want to use. I'm using Belgian wit beer. This is white yeast, 39. 44. I'm going to ferment this one fairly cool, so sort of mid 60s Fahrenheit initially, and then warm it up to really build up some of those esters um, yeah, a few days into fermentation. Got to say, I am looking forward to giving this one a try. This one's come out cloudy. It has. Cannot see through that at all. It's very, very hazy looking. Yeah, this looks just what I was hoping for. And a fantastic job at the pour there. Yeah, as well. you got a little bubble going on on yours. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, rare. really, really cloudy looking beer. Um, let's see if we get anything on the aroma okay. for all these hops that are in here. It smells quite mellow. Yeah, I'm getting some. I'm getting some fruity hops, but also that kind of Belgian smell that you get with yeah. like a, a Belgian wit or something like that. I could, I could see that. Mm. It def actually definitely has a wit smelling to it does. scent to it. I'm trying to smell it and not end up with a... <laughs> well, I am very excited to give this one a go. Let's, uh, let's go for the taste. Okay. It tastes really light for an IPA. Yeah, it's light, refreshing. A um, little bit of spice and fruitiness in there. This is a real summer drink. It is mm. definitely not summer right now, but this is a warm weather drink. Oh, for sure. And um, because you said like German and or Belgian, I could taste that. Is it meant to taste like that? It uses Belgian yeast. Okay, so, so that would make sense. It smells a bit, a bit like orange peel. 
Does it? <laughs> a little bit. Uh, well, funny you should mention that. Uh, it does use bitter orange peel in there. Okay. Um, it's definitely not overly orange, the beer, but right. definitely bitter. I think you can get that the bitterness out of the, yeah. the peel for sure. I assume that's where I'm getting that tartish flavor. Yeah. Do you have a favorite IPA so far? Actually, the my favorite IPA has been the Rye IPA. You know, I was pleasantly shocked with that one. I thought it was going to be awful, honestly, just with the name, but it was quite nice. It had a good flavor, a good aroma, and you christened it with a good name. Yeah, Rye PA. The Rye PA. So. I cannot ever forget that now because it just, it just blends so well. <laughs> well, this does conclude category 21, which was all of the IPAs, mm -hmm. but uh, we are staying with the IPA style in next week's beer in category 22, uh, just with a something a bit more on the strong side. Okay. Mm. Interesting. So until then, cheers. cheers.